Hey guys, today I got four easy steps for size and dust collection, and we're gonna see what's better, piping in an entire system or just dragging around a flex hose. I calculated earlier that with 10 feet of six inch flex and my dust collector, we should be getting right around 1300 CFM. So let's uh, check it out. That was pretty dang close. And now we know how well my dust collector works when moving a long flex hose from tool to tool. And now I'm going to install permanent duct into each tool. Once I'm done, we'll take another reading and we'll be able to answer the big question of what's better. Now, designing a dust collection system is actually a lot easier than you probably think. So let's begin with step one. And this step is actually more like a rule, 4,000 feet per minute, and it's a must. So what is feet per minute or FPM? It's just an airspeed. It's the same thing as kilometers or miles per hour. Yeah, it's that simple, but it is very important. And in all of your pipes, you can have a little bit more, but absolutely no less than the 4,000 feet per minute. So I've been thinking about materials though, and it's a bit of a, a tense subject, isn't it? So I need to tread light. I think a lot of us like PVC mainly because of the cost and maybe it's a little bit easier for most to work with. Nice thing about sheet metal, you can get whatever size you actually need. Whereas with PVC, you're kind of limited to four, six or eight inch. Also, the fittings are a little different. Sheet metal is made for air, whereas a lot of the sewer and drain pipe is made for poop. Really though, use what you prefer. Oddly enough, right now with the shortage of PVC, sheet metal was a few hundred dollars cheaper. So whatever you do, don't buy from the big box stores for something like this. Get organized, create a material takeoff, then once you know what you need, reach out to the suppliers and have a few of them price it out. Okay, I think we're ready for step two. And we'll call this step, choose, your CFM, which is a volume flow rate. It stands for cubic feet per minute. Don't think of it as like a speed, like how fast your car is moving. Rather think of it as how many cars will pass this point in a minute. This would depend on two things, obviously the speed of the cars, but also how many lanes you have. So it's completely up to you. You need to decide how much CFM you want at each tool. And for simplicity, we're just gonna pick one number for all tools. You could go with the old school thought of 350 CFM is all that I need, but I recommend at least 600 and closer to 800. And if you're a little nutty like me, then you could shoot for 1,000. So there you have it. Now you know your feet per minute and your CFM. Quick tip, you really want a straight section of pipe heading into your cyclone. Most specs call for three pipe diameters. So if you can, try to stay away from those funky Ys right off the cyclone. Some might say this looks a little ugly, but to me, it's beautiful. Okay, step three. You'll often see this abbreviated as TEL, which stands for Total Equivalent Length. And it's something that we add up individually for each tool's pipe run. So let's take a look at the jointer. First, we tally up the total length of the actual pipe run. That's three feet, four, nine, 11, 12, 14 feet. Next, we need to add in a little extra for all the fittings to account for all the resistance 
and friction that they introduce. So we start here with eight feet of flex hose, move to a Y, a 90 degree elbow, 45 degree elbow, another 45, and lastly, a Y. Adding all those fittings up and we get 109 feet of fittings plus our 14 feet of actual pipe length, which equals 123 equivalent length. Keep in mind, this is just a hypothetical number we are using to represent all the friction in the system up to and excluding the cyclone and the filter. Now steps one, two, and three give us some really important information that we'll actually use in step four. But first, check out what came today. That's uh, quite the tower they made. It's freezing out here. I see why he didn't make much effort on the delivery. So another thing to consider is what you want to do for your blast gates. Now in my world at work, these are always automated by a controls contractor. But for us, we have a few different options. Manual blast gates are a great option and cost next to nothing. But if you'd like to automate it, you could build your own system, get nerdy and program an Arduino, very tempting. Or you could go with a product like iVac. For me, this looked like a great solution and I couldn't find anything easier to install. Big thanks to iVac for helping me out with all this product. It's crazy that the easiest part of this entire project is going to be the automation. This guy here is called the Pro Tool Plus and it's a current sensor. It connects wirelessly with the blast gate and also with that yellow box on the wall, the iVac Pro switch, which controls the dust collector. Each tool has one on its power cord. If I turn on the jointer, it should automatically open the blast gate and turn on the dust collector all in a few seconds. Let's see if it works. Unreal. I can't get over the fact that this just took two hours and everything just worked. Even if I was just using a long flex hose and no blast gates, I would consider using the iVac Pro Switch and the Pro Tool Plus just to make things easier. So if you've come this far, you might as well seal your joints. You can lose 10 to 20% just from leakage. So if you're using PVC, a glue them, and with sheet metal, aluminum foil tape will work, but any sort of duct seal will just last longer and handle the vibrations much better. And step four here, we're gonna determine two things, the pipe diameter and also our static pressure. We're gonna keep step four really simple, but it won't work unless you're subscribed. So once you're subscribed, then open up Google and search duct calculator. Most of these search results will work, but we're just gonna pick the first one. I'll also link a few others in the description for you. First, select velocity because we don't know our friction rate, AKA our static pressure. Next, enter the required 4,000 feet per minute. I'll enter my 123 of equivalent length. And lastly, enter the desired CFM. Hit calculate, and there you go. You have your diameter and your static pressure in inches of water column. I know, confusing units, but it's just the pressure. The same thing as Pascal's or PSI. Two important comments, then it's time for our final reading and to see what's best. This first comment is to keep you safe. Round down to the nearest inch on your pipe diameter because you need to maintain that 4,000 feet per minute to prevent any dust buildup inside your pipe or around any fittings. You see, the thing is your air velocity actually decreases as you increase your pipe diameter. So just remember, round down. The second comment will help prevent you from buying the wrong dust collector, or if you already have one, it'll help you figure out what you can get from it. On the dust collector's website, you should be able to view something called a fan curve. This fan curve will tell you the unit's actual CFM. So our static pressure is on the vertical and the corresponding actual CFM is on the horizontal. So take a ruler and place it on your static pressure from step four. This intersection point with the curve will give you the actual CFM if you draw a line straight down. If the CFM you want from step two is out to lunch when compared to the actual CFM from the curve, 
then just repeat step four with the actual CFM. That will give you an updated static pressure and you might need to do this a few times, but eventually you'll have your duct size and your CFM bang on. Time to compare this ducted system to what I had previously, just the flex hose. With my fan curve and the info from step four, we calculated that we should have 1250 CFM here at the jointer. Sadly, that's a little less than what I had before. Once again, pretty close to what we actually calculated. And now that I've shown you how to properly design your dust collection system, let's be real. You don't need a fully ducted system to get better performance in a small hobby workshop like mine. Moving a flex hose from tool to tool while inconvenient won't actually reduce the performance at this scale. But hopefully you can now use this video to size your pipe, your flex hose, or even your dust collector. Lastly, everything you've learned in this video will go to waste unless you take care of the air quality in your shop. Click on the screen now to see a way better solution than those cancer-causing filter boxes, and I bet you've never seen it before.